So yesterday, someone sent me this video, Eric Dollard, uh, Transverse and Longitudinal Electric Waves. Uh, I believe it was Skybolt sent me this video, and we're having a little discussion about it, and I thought I would make a quick video. Um, there's some interesting things. This is a video I hadn't seen before. As you can see, Eric Dollard is, is quite young in this video, so this video was recorded quite some time ago. But there's some interesting things in here that I thought maybe I would I would uh, make a video on. So uh, we are going to watch bits and pieces of this video. I will put a link to it in the description, and I encourage that you watch this video before you watch my video. Uh, it will make more sense probably if you do it that way. So um, go ahead and go and watch this video, and then when you are up for it, you can come and watch my video. So the video starts out with a discussion of the differences between longitudinal and transverse waves. And so we are going to start with a quick discussion of uh, transverse and longitudinal waves. Now the modernistic science of today will tell you that longitudinal electric waveforms do not exist. And uh, we're going to show you that they do. And uh, here, basically to get a practical demonstration or a practical analogy, well, we have water, and everybody understands the waves in water, which we can call a transverse waveform, standard waveform. And uh, we know standard waves as they go along in the water, and the movement of the water is up and down, just like we know a boat on the water will go up and down, and the energy flow goes in this direction. Okay, so I am going to um, clarify that with this, uh, this uh, website right here, which I've shown you before. And here you can see uh, the transverse wave. This would be a transverse water wave. And as you can see, the uh, molecules of water are moving up and down um, the wall, uh, compared to the direction of flow of the wave. And so um, here's a transverse water wave. Here you can see the wave is propagating from left to right, but the um, atoms, the molecules of water are on average moving up and down. Now you can see from this video right here that they are in fact moving in a circular motion. Um, they are basically moving up and down, but they're moving in a circular motion and uh, on average, they are staying in this region of space. So the water molecules themselves, although it looks like it when you look at the wave, the water molecules themselves do not um, get displaced. They do not move with the wave. They stay in on location, and the wave propagates down uh, the line it, from left to right in this animation. And the energy flow goes in this direction. So a transverse wave, we have a phase quadrature between the movement and the energy flow. So basically what they're calling phase quadrature here is just the fact that the water molecules move orthogonal to the direction of energy flow, the direction uh, uh, that the wave is propagating. And here we have longitudinal waves. And a longitudinal wave could be like a tidal wave or a tsunami, which we know is undetectable until it hits the shore. So as it goes through the water, the movement of the water is linear and the energy flow is linear. So we see. So let me clarify that with this um, uh, animation here of a longitudinal wave. So here you can see. Um, the longitudinal wave is moving from left to right, but the molecule and the molecules on average are oscillating back and forth. It, yes, it looks like from this animation, it looks like the molecules might be moving with the wave, but they're not. They're in fact, you can see this little arrow here. Hopefully you can see that, that the actual water molecules are moving back and forth, but they are moving in the same direction. They're moving parallel to the uh, direction of the propagating wave. So legacy physics says that uh, transverse electromagnetic waves exist, 
but they say that um, longitudinal electromagnetic waves do not exist. Okay, so um, they're basically saying electromagnetic waves, light uh, is a transverse wave only, and that there is no such thing as a longitudinal uh, electromagnetic wave, which I believe Eric Dollard refers to as a magneto dielectric or dielectromagneto wave. So as it goes through the water, the movement of the water is linear and the energy flow is linear, so we see it's in phase conjunction. And the direction it goes in the boat on the top will receive no up and down motion from that wave. So they refer to a longitudinal wave as a uh, in phase conjunction with the direction of motion of the particles. And as he points out, if there is a boat on the surface and there is a longitudinal wave going through the water, that it is not going to experience that up and down motion. And this is important. This is going to be important later on when we talk about the concept of um, space and counter space. And uh, to get a more practical demonstration here, uh, Eric Dollard will demonstrate. We have here a piece of uh, BX cable, and I'll just act as the ground on this. Okay, to start with, our transverse waves, which will be our quadrature motion, be represented by this form. As we can see, we have an exact analogy to what's drawn on the board. If I transmit just one pulse, you can kind of see it takes a long time to get to the other end. But the longitudinal wave, of course, is over there almost immediately. And other than, you know, the slippage at the other end, it's almost undetectable that this wave even exists, other than that little shaking around. So as you can see, the transverse wave requires an up and down motion, okay? And the longitudinal wave, as he is uh, showing here, uh, does not require an up and down motion. And in the speed of propagation of the wave, now I'm not sure, really sure I would call that a wave, but the point here is that it does not require uh, an up and down motion. So uh, why is that important? Let's go back to the um, this video here, okay? So a transverse wave, okay, here's what happens with a transverse wave. The transverse wave uh, cannot exist without, say, some space on the outside, without something on the outside for it to, um, to move into. So the water requires, a transverse wave of water requires um, another medium, I guess is what I want to say. So it requires another medium. So in the case of an actual water wave, uh, this would be air. Okay, this would be air. So let's have a look at the water wave here. And we see that the water um, sort of moves into the space of the air and the air moves into the space of the water. So the water displaces the air and the air replaces the water. Uh, so in, in the, uh, the peak of the water, the water is, is displacing the air, and in the trough of the water, the air is replacing the water. So a, um, a propagating transverse wave requires some other medium for the particles to move into and to move away from. And that is the difference between a longitudinal and a transverse wave. In the longitudinal wave, it doesn't require another medium to move into and out of, okay? A, a longitudinal wave happens in the bulk of the medium, okay? It require it is propagating in the bulk of the medium. So it doesn't require another sort of spatial extent, another spatial extent to, um, to move, so the water molecules can move into this spatial extent and, and create the circular motion so that the wave can propagate down the line. And that is the difference between the transverse and the longitudinal wave. Now, Eric Dollard um, basically says that, um, calls a transverse wave a spatial wave, it propagates in space, 
but I think I think that using those that terminology is a little bit confusing. I think it's better to say that the transverse wave requires another spatial medium. Okay, it requires another spatial medium in order to propagate, whereas the longitudinal wave can propagate, propagate in the bulk of the medium, and it doesn't have to move into some other spatial extent, such as the air in the case of um, a wave on planet Earth. Okay, so uh, that is basically my explanation. Uh, it's a better way, I think, of thinking of the difference between transverse and longitudinal waves, and it is a better way of... Um, Instead of the term space and counterspace, saying transverse wave is spatial wave and, and longitudinal wave is counterspatial, really I think what uh, Eric is saying is that the um, transverse wave requires a uh, spatial medium, a medium with which to move into and out of in order to have a transverse wave. Um, I hope that makes sense. I think that clarifies a little bit of the terminology of space and counter space, and uh, hopefully that will give you a better idea of what Eric Dollar means when he says that longitudinal waves are counter spatial. It doesn't mean that they're, it's, you know, there's counter space is not a place, counter space is not a space. It's just a word that, to say that the longitudinal wave, trans, uh, the longitudinal wave propagates in the bulk of the medium and the transverse wave uh, requires another medium uh, in order to be able to uh, propagate. So here you can see as he's creating a transverse wave, the wave must move um, spatially in, uh, into and out of the medium that we call air. And um, when he is pulling on the string here, he is showing that this is basically counterspatial because the only direction of motion is in, doesn't, doesn't require a spatial extent. So this motion here is basically um, along this line and does not require an up and down motion into another medium, into a spatial medium into the air, into, if this was in outer space, this would be in the uh, medium that we call space. And so um, I just wanted to make this short video. I am going to do uh, more analysis of this video and make more videos on it, but this was the main point I wanted to make in this video, was the clarification of the term space and counter space in relation to the transverse and longitudinal waves that Eric Dollard is talking about in this video. So, um, so this will be continued, but I want to maybe do it in smaller pieces so that the videos aren't too uh, overwhelming. So I hope you're having a great day and um, well, I'll be back.